Our praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They seek his forgiveness, his guidance, and his assistance. And we take refuge with him from the evil within our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives guidance to, none can mislead, and whoever he misleads, none can guide. I bear witness. There's nothing and no one worship, what, nothing worthy of worship besides Allah alone. He has no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him peace and to extend to him our salutations on this blessed day, just as we ask him to show peace and mercy to his family members, his companions, and everyone who follows in goodness and shows goodwill into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنِّي تَفَرَّسْتُ فِيكَ الْخَيْرَ عَارِفُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا خَانِنِ الْبَصَرُ I detect within you all the goodness that I recognize. And Allah knows that my eyes do not betray me. أَنْتَ النَّبِيُّ وَمَنْ يُحْرَمُ سَفَاعَتَهُ يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ فَقَدْ أَزْرَى بِهِ الْقَدَرُ You are the prophets. You are the Prophet, and whoever is denied your intercession on the day of reckoning, then fate has dealt a great blow to that person. So may Allah firmly plant all the good that He's given you in the same way that he granted stability to Musa and a help similar to the help that he gave to those who came before you. These are the words of the companion Abdullah ibn Rawaha, Rajallahu An, a poem that he, or part of a poem that he composed in praise of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Abdullah ibn Rawaha, one of, one of the great Sahaba from the Ansar, and we're all familiar with Hassan ibn Thabit as one of the poets who used to def defend the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Abdullah ibn Rawaha was another of those who would defend the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam in poetry. I glean the goodness that I recognize in you. And Allah knows that my eyes do not deceive me. They don't betray me. Speaking of the importance of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and the importance of receiving his intercession on the day of judgment. Hassan ibn Thabit similarly he said about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam wa ahsanu minka lam turaqattu aini wa ajmalu minka lam talid al niza'u my eye has never seen anything more beautiful than you nor has any woman given birth to someone or with more consummate in virtue than you are. <laughs> that you were created free of any flaw or every flaw. It's as if you were created in the way that you wanted to be. The words of Hassan ibn Thabit about our messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. I have to admit that every time that I choose to speak about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, it's very difficult to decide on what aspect of the life of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam that I would like to emphasize because there's so many things about him. Uh, should we speak about his his devotion, or speak about his commitment and conviction, you speak about his justice, or his mercy, speak about his role as a political leader, his role as a father, as a nephew, as a son, uh, and so many other aspects to his life that we can speak about, his public life, his private life. And perhaps there is no person who has ever existed that we have more information about the details, the fine details about his life than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, having those details creates a type of vulnerability. 
with respect to the Messenger of Allah, which gives the enemies of the Messenger of Allah areas to launch an attack against him. But it's very difficult to choose what to talk about about the Messenger of Allah. Should we talk about his role as the Prophet, or and also or should we talk about his human characteristics or his humanity in the in the way that he's so much like all the rest of us? difficult to choose what to speak about. But we also should understand the significance of Muhammad and the significance of the Anbiya in general, all the Prophets. I think that this often is missed uh, when we reflect upon his life and reflect upon the lives of the Prophets and the Messengers and even our reality, the reality is where we live and that we live on a planet in the middle of the universe, floating around, we would say, in space. What is the significance? There are many important significances, of course, to the messengers and the prophets. But we, we have to remind ourselves the fact that we are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the life that we have has been given to us. The health that we have has been given to us. The, the perfect conditions that exist on this planet for us to continue to survive, right, have been given to us. The blood that runs through our veins without our choice. Our hearts beat without our choice. Our lungs and everything else about us, our eyes, our ears, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A day will come when those hair bags will no longer work. And that motor inside of our chest will stop beating. And then we'll have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the human being the most important creature on this planet. The only creature with the capacity to both destroy all life, but also the capacity, and even concern at times, to save our life on this planet. That Allah created angels and given them rationality and removed from them appetite, created the lower animals and given them with appetite which overwhelms their being and reduced the amounts of rationality that they had. But he gave the human being a combination of both and expected from us to master the lower appetite with the higher appetite. But Allah has placed within us something called nadam, remorse. And, and, so, and that in itself is differentiates us to an extent from shaitan, that he had no remorse, that he disobeyed God and he was defiant. And, but Adam alayhi salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he placed it within him that he would turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really realizing his mistake and, and seeking forgiveness for his mistake. But the messengers they have been given to us as examples to show us what human potential is. Say to them, if there happen to be angels walking secure in the earth, then we would send down an angel to them as a messenger. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us human messengers, to teach us that this is what you can do as well, that you have this potential. If Allah has sent down angels who don't have the passion to cause them uh, a type of unsettled uh, um, uh, emotional states and, and make it difficult for them to comply like us, then we could always say, yeah, Allah can't do that. Because they, they can do it because they're angels. They don't have appetite like I have appetite. But Allah sends human beings. <laughs> that say, I am nothing more than a human being, a mortal, a mortal human being like you. You <laughs> But revelation given to me is well one of the aspects of the Prophet's life that remind us of how much he is like all of us. And if anything, I do think it's a mistake often that Muslims, when they speak about the Prophet Muhammad and his 
psycho-emotional state that when you hear many Muslims talk, you get the impression that the Prophet ﷺ was a stoic. In other words, that he just, you know, he said, you hear the Prophet, he never lost faith in Allah, that he never had weak faith, he never doubted, he never struggled, he never suffered fear or sadness. But all you have to do is read the Quran to learn about the state of the Messenger alayhi salatu And of course, it's never meant to diminish his stature it with us, but to put things in proper context. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you read the Quran, you see fear, you see sadness, you see distress, you see this, uh, that this, uh, that distress and harm came to them and they were shaken. To the point that the messenger and those who believe. You know, the messenger also, right, said what? When shall the help of God come? We see Muhammad in distress. That he was of course, he would beat himself up. Why don't they believe? Why don't they follow the message? It's, it's, it, salvation is easy for them. Why not just believe that he was, he was concerned for the humanity of others? More, most importantly, he concerned for that akhirah, concerned that they get salvation in the hereafter. And of course, we can speak about his mercy. He was a mercy to all the worlds. He was a mercy. To himself, he was a mercy to his family, to his tribe, to his enemies. He was a mercy to all of them. He was a mercy to the believers. He was a mercy to the believers. Nu'iman ibn Amr, the, um, the trickster among the Sahaba, had a problem. He had a drinking problem. And he was being punished on one occasion. And Certain persons started to speak bad of him. And the Messenger alayhi salatu said, don't curse your brother. F -f because what? He loves in Allah. Allah wa Rasulah. He loves Allah and his messenger. He loves Allah and his messenger. Even though he's a sinner, he loves Allah and his messenger. You see it so many different occasions. There's not enough time to go into all of these examples. But I will mention one more example. There was a woman who came to the Prophet and she confessed that she committed adultery. And the Prophet said, oh, go back to make Toba. You, you know, maybe, you know, it was really nothing, you know, other than something very small. And so, go make Toba. And the Prophet kept sending her away. They said, well, maybe you're trying, you're trying to deal with me in the same way you dealt with Ma'is ibn Malik, who was another man who, a man prior to her, had come to and confessed uh, of adultery, and the Prophet ﷺ gave him his purification. But this woman comes, and, and then the Prophet, and she's trying to turn her away. He doesn't, he's not obsessed with trying to point, punish her. He knows what the hadd is. You know, go and make toba. And so she goes, I'm pregnant. And then the Prophet ﷺ turns and says to her, Go have your baby. She leaves. And after she gives birth, she returns to the Messenger Ali, his salatu wasalam. Then she has the baby with her and says, Ya Rasulullah, I've given birth. Give me my purification. Tahirni. And then the Prophet said, Don't go and feed your child, nurse your child until it's weaned off of your milk. Two more years. She could have fled at any time. She could have left Medina. You know. She leaves and then comes back after two years. And then she has the baby and the baby is holding a piece of bread in his hand to indicate that this baby is no longer drinking my milk, he's eating real food now. And then the Prophet said, now at this moment, once he realizes her sincerity, that, that he then orders her to receive her purification. And then after she dies, the Prophet, he prays over her. Which is really interesting because we learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that the Imam, the leader of the community, should never pray over a sinner because it belittles the sin. 
This is like when one occasion a man, he was about to lead the prayer, and then he asked, is there anyone to whom this man owes a debt? And then somebody speaks up, say, yes, Rasulullah, he owes me this much money. And then the prophet turns to the companions and says, then pray over your brother. He leads them. Not the prophet's prayer, someone else's prayer, which we know not really guaranteed to be accepted. A prophet's prayer would be accepted. And of course, the prophet needs to go gather up money for the debt, the man's debt. But this case, the prophet, he prays over this woman. And he says that if her toba had to be distributed and divided among the people of Medina, then it would be enough for the people of Medina. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive every single one of them. You mean, Yom al Qiyamah, when they meet Allah, no hisab, don't worry about it. In other words, it's a sincere tawbah. So the Messenger alayhi salam, he was a mercy to everyone. And most importantly, a mercy to his community. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we experience a similar mercy as the mercy shown by a Messenger alayhi salam. And of course, shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his Messenger. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء وسيد المسلمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In closing, what needs to be understood is that the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he is our standard, he is our exemplar, he is the one we are expected to become like as much as possible. And our salvation depends upon that, how much we become like the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. All of us fall short. No one, none of, none of us are, are perfect. And the Messenger, although he was a mercy, we also must not obscure a reality, another reality, which is that Although he was a mercy and he was kind all the time, does it mean that he was that way with every single person? Nor was he expected to be that way to every single person. Because Allah tells him in the Quran, Ya ayyuha nabiyu, jahid al kufara wa munafiqina wa alayhim. O Prophet, struggle, do jihad against the kufar and the hypocrites and show them sternness. Show them a type of abrasiveness, a stern towards those people, the enemies of God. But his norm, as you know, was he's rahma lil alameen. Rahma lil alameen. He forgave even in spite of all things. When people fought against him, he still forgave them, right? Once they, of course, made their proper reforms. And he was merciful to this woman. He was merciful to others who committed sin, who were sinners among the Sahaba, who committed these sins among the Sahaba. But that in itself is, does not mean that the prophet affirmed sin. The prophet did not affirm sin. The prophet ﷺ did not affirm fornication or adultery or sodomy, right? That the prophet ﷺ does not affirm theft or the murder of children. That the prophet ﷺ, he leaves the door open for people who are willing to repent and reform themselves, right? And this, these are some of the few lessons that we can mention today. And of course, there are many, many more. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us the life <clears throat> so that we can complete his mission of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, because we are part of that mission of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being a light for others. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bless our messenger that he loved our messenger and he placed the love of our messenger in our hearts. We ask you, Allah, that you guide us to actions which will bring us closer to you and increase your love for us. Oh Allah, please love us because we love our messenger. Allah, Allah, please love us because we love your messenger. Increase our love for the messenger of Allah. And Allah, please guide us in, during dark times. 
and protect us from the evil of the machinations of shaitan and his minions. Inna Allahu wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zaynuhu fi kulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-isyan wa jahalna min al-rashidin Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami' alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta tuwab al-rahim Allahumma kfir li muslimin wa muslimat wa al-mu'minin wa mu'minat al-ahiyyai minhum wa al-amwaj wa kfir lana Allahumma ma'ahum bi fadlika abu ihsanika ya arham al-rahimin اللهم ربنا آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وارحم محمد وآل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وبارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين ما قيم الصلاة